Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a really special show today, and Nika Roback is going to introduce our speaker. Hi, thank you, Peggy. So, yes, today we have an exciting um, David Barrett. He's going to talk to us about uh, cost segregation. Um, if you don't know much about cost segregation, uh oh, something happened. Oh, oh he's already pouring. It threw me off. <laughs> no, that's, all right. that's all right. I thought it was something that I pushed or punched on my uh, on my on my uh, computer. Anyway, so um, if you don't know much about cost segregation, the best benefit is the tax benefits. We're all looking for more tax benefits. Um, so he's going to kind of get into um, the nitty gritty of it. And he actually just to also say uh, he works in most of the states, I believe. So no matter where you buy your property, um, he can help you. Take it away, Dave. Okay, thank David. you. David, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, just Dave or David, I don't care as long as you okay. don't, don't forget to call me for dinner or whatever they right. say. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to just give a very broad overview of cost segregation and, and my role and, and how I would support uh, any of you and any of your friends associates with cost segregation uh, we're an independent third party that will study the building uh, one of the things uh, that the irs mentions in their guidelines is an in independent uh, third party uh, arm's length relationship so um, i don't know if there's any issues with the diys there are some do-it-yourself ones out there but you know just know that the IRS guidelines say it should be an arm's length. And if you're doing the study yourself, we think that could be a, a, a red flag potentially. So um, anyhow, let me kind of walk you through some of this. I'm going to go to my very broad Big Mac analogy. <laughs> so, so there's basically two methods uh, to depreciate an income property. One is take the whole building and all of its pieces and take it over 27 and a half or over 39 years if it's a, a commercial office building. A short-term rental needs to be uh, also depreciated over 39 years like a hotel motel, which uh, some people are not as familiar with, but just important. But anyhow, straight line method is you take out the land value from your purchase and whatever's left you just simply divide by 39 years or 27 and a half years to get your annual depreciation deduction. Cost segregation is another method. Uh, it's an IRS approved method for 20 some years now. And basically uh, you can get an engineering study of your property where we break down all the pieces and parts of the building and, and how much those pieces and parts are. And each of those pieces or parts of your building can get better tax treatment and faster depreciation, um, which I'll show you in this next slide. Here's some examples of five-year uh, property, which are the interior, you could call them extras, uh, the extras that you've put into your property. And these are the things that have that kind of value for uh, quicker depreciation, uh, cabinets, shelving, counters, uh, carpet, flooring, fixtures, uh, fireplaces, baseboard, crown molding, uh, paint, uh, window treatments like mini blinds, uh, ceiling fans. Oh, it actually says it here. Okay. Accent, interior lighting. If you have re recessed lighting, there's extra uh, wiring that needs to get to that lighting. So there's extra tax benefit with uh, a, a recessed lighting system. Uh, security system, interior designs, decor, et cetera. So that's the five-year, the interior uh, components to the property that we would separate out and put a value to in a study. Uh, and then there's 15-year property, which is the exterior components. Um, if your property has a big hill beside it so that the, the parking lot is really sloped to the main drain, uh, that site drainage because of how it's laid out in the parking lot, for example, has extra value uh, for the, the grading that was necessary for that property. Uh, of course, the parking lot, the curbs, driveway, landscaping, fencing, gates, uh, mailboxes, swimming pools, basketball, tennis courts, light poles, fire hydrants, retaining walls by the hill. 
uh, playgrounds, exterior signs. So these are the things that we look for. And um, if you're building a property, we would just get basically a, a large Excel document of everything that you uh, that you paid for that went into the property for the drywall, for the roof shingles. We can do it. Um, in fact, originally, uh, cost segregation was only done that way. If you have all the building material costs, then you can do cost segregation. Uh, the law changed. I think it was 2017 with the job, uh, Jobs Cuts uh, tax cuts and jobs act, and now you can do it on a on a building that you purchase, and we do it retro <laughs> retroactively, if you will. We take the building apart as if it was being constructed, and put a, a value to all of those items. And basically, what it used to be is all these five year items. You would instead of taking them over twenty seven or over thirty nine years you used to be able to take the value of all these five-year components over five years, which is way faster than 27 or 39 years. And of course, the exterior components over 15 years, that's a lot faster depreciation than 27 or 39 years. However, in 2017, they passed uh, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, and it allowed 100% bonus depreciation on properties purchased from I think it's September 27th through uh, December 31st of 2022. Any property purchased in those years, you can actually, if you want to, you can decide to do a study of the property and take all of the value of these items in the first year. You can front load all of them. The, the law is changing if you put a property in service for the first time, if you put it in service in 2023, this year, when you file taxes next year, you get 80% of the value of these components. And then it it's it's supposed to gradually phase out to be 60%, 40%, 20% over the next uh, five years. However, um, one of our colleagues sent an email and it is being discussed again. So they may be wanting to extend the bonus depreciation. But this is an example. This is a Simi Valley condominium. You'll notice at the top, there's no 15-year property on this because it's a condominium. It's owned by the association. So all the benefits when we studied this uh, residential rental condominium, it was only five-year property. If you look at all the value, the cabinets, 19,000, the molding is 7,000, flooring, 5,000, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the value, whoops, got to go back. I, I got all your pictures blocking the bottom of this. I got to move all your friendly faces. Okay, now I can see the bottom. So the value, this condominium, after taking out land value, what, what the owner of this condominium got, and he bought it a number of years ago, he paid $280,000. Um, I think he had owned it for three years when we did this study last year, but 25% of the property qualified as five-year uh, five property. So this entire 72,000 was able to be, instead of taking over 27 years, it was able to be deducted in 21 when he applied this study uh, to the property. What I want to do is show you a couple other quick things and then answer questions. This is... I. A lot of people tell me they find these interesting, so I show these a lot <laughs> on podcasts. But this is a, an attorney office that I did a study for, um, and you can see this. Uh, it's a retail office, um, and because it's an attorney office, it's very well built out, mahogany-looking, if you will, cabinetry. And you can see uh, in the five-year property, there was $244,000 we were able to separate out out of the 1.7 again he paid let's say 2.7 million for the property take out the land value in ventura which is maybe 35 40 percent so there's a million dollars of land value that's been removed from the purchase price we just studied what what he got after removing the land value and basically there's 240,000 some dollars of interior components that were extras that can be accelerated with the current tax law and he had a small parking lot, maybe 15 spaces. I don't know, just guessing how large it was. And there was 146,000 there. So if you add these two numbers together, he was able to accelerate about 
$280,000 of additional depreciation. And again, in a 35% federal tax bracket, uh, you know, 380,000 is worth 100 and 110, 115,000 in, in terms of money able to be kept in the pocket. So if I could, I'll show one other quick thing and then we can open up for questions. This is uh, this is a Malibu property that was purchased. Again, take out the land value in Malibu. It's like 50%. So he probably paid about 3.6 for the property. After taking out land value, uh, the property was 1.8 million. It's basically like a quadplex behind like three small offices right on PCH. So it's it's actually retail. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a fiveplex. I was trying to remember. Um, but anyhow, out of that 1.8 million that he paid for that property, after taking out the land, um, he could have taken 39 year, divide this by 39 and take $110,000 deduction or do a study of the property, and we estimated 416000 as a write-off. The difference between these two numbers is this, 306000 That's the additional write-off he was able to get in a 40% federal tax bracket. It's $120,000 uh, tax savings. But what I really wanted to show you is that he also did uh, renovation to the property. And a lot of people forget about cost segregation when they do a renovation. And I want to share something with you called PAD. PAD is the initials for partial asset disposition. If you buy a property and you know you're going to fix it up, and let's say it's a multifamily, which means new carpet, cabinet refacing, maybe linoleum, all of the five-year property on the interior, if a lot of it is going to be renovated, let me give you a strategy that a lot of people miss. Some people will buy that property, immediately start doing the work. And that's not a good tax strategy. If you buy the property and you know you need some work on it, if you can hold the property and get rent in a calendar year and start doing the renovation in the next calendar year, after January 1st, let's say, just to be clear, you then qualify for PAD, Partial Asset Disposition, Everything that goes in the dumpster has value. And we put value to that in your renovation. For example, this uh, property, he spent 1.3 million fixing it up. We estimated that we could accelerate the depreciation in the new carpet, the new cabinets going in for 300 and whoops, 300, uh, $357,000 of value. But please notice, we also estimated with the repair regulations, $236,000 of components that went in the trash can that we will put value to in the study as well. A lot of people are familiar with cost segregation, which is a great accelerated depreciation expense. But ultimately, you want to expense as much as possible. And if you're buying a fixer-up property, if you start fixing it up the same calendar year that you buy it, the IRS thinks that it's okay. The property's not in such bad a shape. So the strategy is to buy a property before the end of a calendar year, collect some kind of rent to prove it's in service, collecting rent. Then we can help you put a value to what goes in the trash for this particular client, it's 230 some thousand dollars. <laughs> and we will defend that if it's ever audited. That's what a partial asset disposition is. A lot of people miss it. Um, I'll also mention something that's also coming up uh, and then we'll open up for questions. Everybody's interested in short-term rentals because there's some tremendous opportunities for tax benefits with short-term rentals. With a short-term rental, it's kind of the same thing. If you buy a property that you're going to turn into a short-term rental, get some short-term rental income in that property in a calendar year before you do the renovations in the next calendar year. And you will get something called QIP, which is quality improvement property, which is even better than a pad. And that is for 39-year property, commercial property, like a office building, motel, hotel, which is why short-term rentals are 39-year property because they are like a motel. So anyhow, we always say uh, before you buy, 
sell, <laughs> or renovate your property, give us a call. <laughs> Let us give you some ideas. And that's it. We'll open it up for questions. How do I release this? Well, could, before you get off that screen, can you explain it? Because you showed sure. the first year, but can you explain how you're getting 100% in 22 and in 2026? Well, you're not. Okay, this is just this is just uh, a very very busy uh, estimate, actually. So, basically, okay, the prop. I'll go from the top to the bottom, and maybe that'll be clear. So, December of twenty one, this property was purchased. After taking out the land value, this is. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the uh, this is the repair work that was done. Okay. He did the repair work in December of 21. It was all completed by the end of 21. So he could have done 39 year straight line method of depreciation, divide this number by 39 years. His write-off for 2021 would have only been $1,419 by using the 39 year straight line method of this renovation project. However, because it's cost segregation and we got we had the list of all the components going in, we were able to estimate $359,000. <laughs> I think you would all agree on this call, $359,000 is a better write-off than $1,400. <laughs> so so uh, th the difference between these two numbers is this number here. That's the benefit. That's the reason to do the study of the property is to get that accelerated depreciation of 357,000. If he's in a federal income tax bracket of 40%, that saves him $143,000 on his federal income taxes for the renovation. The next part of this is the repair regulations. Based on knowing what he was putting in, how much carpet, how much cabinetry, we were able to estimate that there's about $236,000 of components going in the trash. And the IRS does not want you to have two roofs on your depreciation schedule. When the old one goes in the trash, you got to remove that value. That's a write-off. You can take and you have to take in the same year that you put it in the trash. However, most CPAs tell me they miss this. So you need to be on your game yourself because sometimes they will miss a pad. That's what I've been told a number of times. So, so this, this here uh, in a 40% tax bracket saves them about $94,000 of federal taxes. This amount here is just the accelerated depreciation of the items going in. If you, if you combine these two, then it's a, the, he got a really good 200 thousand dollar accelerated depreciation on the original building when he bought it but also the renovation gave him one hundred forty three thousand dollars of accelerated depreciation and ninety four thousand dollars of repair regulations of what went in the trash combined it was two hundred thirty seven thousand dollars and because you're taking this faster you're accelerating the depreciation that's why there's these other years to the right which quite frankly confuse me most people would just tell you oh yeah i'd rather have uh dollars of tax savings today <laughs> they don't really care that over time it would have been 234 if they waited a couple years or whatever i mean most people just care about what they can get today but if you have a question about that i'll try to answer it i'm not a tax professional I just know how to support people with real estate uh, with these strategies. So. Well, if you're if you're so in year 2021, he gets a 237,000 write off. In year 2022, does he get the 234? Oh, no, 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 no. This is the cumulative. This is the cumulative. If 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 he's uh, how do I say this differently? Because he bought this in December, like the last week of the year. Oh, excuse me, because he finished all of his construction right. renovation in the last week of the year, there was only like, you can divide this number by 39 to get an annual amount, but then you got to divide by 52 weeks. That's why it's only $1,400. The next year, if, you know, it, if, forget doing a cost segregation study with us, next year, a full year of depreciation would have been $35,000 on this property, just dividing this number by 39, because this this number includes this $1,400. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm looking at the bottom line because no, we're not interested in a straight. I'm interested in what 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 is this number under 2022, the 234? If that's not a that's, I, that's, I thought you got to deduct of let, let, let me explain over the 15 years. Yeah. Let me explain. It's very confusing cost segregation because you've got all this five-year property in there, right? That you can take one-fifth, 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 but you still have to have a value to it. Um, if we can get away from this, and and because I, to be honest with you, I don't know how to answer your questions quickly. This I, is, this is, I simply, know how to answer it. I think now where you said that this is what it would have been if you waited to do the cost segregation in 22. And then this is what it would have been if you waited to do the cost segregation in 2026. Yeah. It's oh. just, it's the cum, accumulated uh, tax benefit over time. So it's the first number and then you did, did and then you have five, don't you have to divide that by the five and the 15? No, because the bonus depreciation you could take in one year. If you didn't have the bonus depreciation, if that wasn't around, you would have to take it over five years. Oh, so that's the bonus. So are you still getting right. some, something to take off over the next few years? No, basically cost segregation is one of two things, or excuse me, your choice of depreciation is one of two things. You can either take Divide your exact building by 39 or 27 years, which we don't take one thirty ninth or one twenty seventh, depending on whether it's residential or commercial, or you can at one time elect to do a cost seg study. And what you're going to normally do is pull forward about 20% of any property. Every study we do, I see about 20% of the depreciable basis is usually pulled forward. So you can elect to simply pull forward 20% of any building that's an income property if you know how you would use that tax savings immediately for other uh, reasons that you would want your hands on that money faster. So. Is there another way to take that deduction? That bottom line? It's wear and tear on your property. So you can either take it evenly over 27 or 39 years of ownership. Now I'm talking about the cost segregation, not the 39 years at all. I'm trying to understand cost segregation. All right, let me go to this. This might make so If I were to take that 236,000 in year one, do I still have a deduction in year two? Yep. Let me show you this. Here it okay. is right in front of you. This is that's, the process. That's my, that's my concern. I want yeah, tax yeah. deductions no, but, every year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So here it is. After taking out the land value of 1.3 for this $3 million property, this again is the amount. You're going to have to blow that up. That's oh, so okay. Sad. I can't make it any bigger. Can you see these numbers at all? Uh, yeah, with my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to show you is the I other can't numbers. see it. Okay. Um, okay, so just explain it. Okay, so if you can't see it, I don't know how year I can. Year five, it. it says year five. Okay, down the left column is 2021, 2022, 2023. It's all the years, 39 years, going to 2058 at the bottom. And this is the amount of your deduction each year. Okay, mm -hmm. these two columns here, are if you do not do a study, if you just simply take 39 years on everything, it would be a $110,000 write-off for 20 and 21. See, this com right. This this combines two years, 20 and 21. That's why this is, is 110 here. But basically, you can see here, if you don't do a study of the property, each year, your your depreciation deduction is forty six thousand. Can you see that? Yeah. And that's the total because everything's in the thirty nine year, which is this category. If you do a cost seg study, we're going to separate the five, the seven, the fifteen, the thirty nine year, and this is the total. So what you're still going to have is a thirty eight thousand dollar write off every year going forward. You're. All you're doing with a cost segregation study is deciding to shift because the tax the tax law allows you to take, uh, I guess, about an eight thousand. The difference between these two numbers is eight thousand dollars that it totals up here that you can now front load with the current tax law. So if you if you don't do a study of the property, your expense is forty six thousand dollars a year. If you do a study of the property and take a four hundred thousand dollar deduction right away, 
you're still going to have $38,000 of write-off each year. Okay. That was your question, right, Peggy? I think. Yes. And that doesn't, and that's all the depreciation also. That's all depreciation. Yeah. If you look at, if you look at the very bottom, you'll see that both columns total the same thing. If you can see it, 1.8 and 11 million. So you're not getting any more depreciation with a study. You're just simply separating out what can be allowed to be taken faster. That's all it is. It's about, I usually find it's about 20% of any property. So, and um, if you know the land values in that area, I could give, I could give some people some rough ideas of their tax benefit. I do that a lot. Okay. I got it. Yep. Thank you very much for explaining from to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, believe me, it's it is confusing. I know it can be very confusing, but uh, but yeah. So, so you explained about PAD, uh-huh. um, and you had another acronym for short term rentals. Quality improvement, that? quality improvement property. It's called QIP. If you owned a lot of retail strip malls or office buildings, you would know what Q, QIP is because. If you can get the tax benefit of building out a space for a new tenant, you would take that hit to get them in the building now because there's a lot of en- empty buildings. Smart people in commercial real estate are using QIP tax benefits to their advantage to get that space filled. Because <laughs> if you could spend you know, $100,000 on a build out and it's immediately most of it expensed, QIP is even better than PAD. So. Does that work on rental property as well as... Um... QIP only works on 39-year properties. So monthly rentals don't qualify for QIP, but a short-term rental does. If it's something that you're going to use an Airbnb facility, you should definitely structure a property in an area that you like that needs a lot of fix-up, but get somebody in there paying you short-term rent for a week or for three or four days before you do the tear-out the next calendar year. So you get to take all the value of what goes in the trash as uh, QIP, yeah. So if I can, I'll just say this, which I think is one of the most important things I could ever mention about the company I represent. Um, Cost segregation services, by the way, the founder of our company was involved in the very first case. Um, He was hired by, I think it was Ernst & Young. I'm not sure who it was actually, but he was a building engineer hired to represent Columbia hospitals because they had like a $800 million tax liability and people joke. And I don't know if it's true, but he might may have been the one that said, Hey, if carpet only lasts five years, how come I have to depreciate it over 39 years? (laughs) And that's where this whole idea for cost segregation as a business came from. It's really the founder of the company. I, I think he's brilliant. I was able to see him in Florida last week. He's, he's amazing, man. Uh, But anyhow, um, everything he does is looking a customer in the eye and doing things right. Uh, We're going to defend any of our results at any time. No cost. We will defend our results. By the way, at a 40, now I should update this. We've done over 40,000 studies now and still only about 15 audits. Uh, But one of those audits went for three years. And we knew we were right because we calculated it correctly, but our client did not pay for three years of legal bills as we defended and appealed and won in the appeal because we knew our study was accurate. By the way, most of the audits are because of some other reason that were were brought into it. It wasn't really that we were involved. It was some other numbers didn't look right and they wanted to look at everything and we're part of it, you know. But you should know that every single time, 40,000 times in a row, we've gotten this correct and we will successfully defend any audit. Uh, There's nine different ways to get a cost seg study, but the number one IRS method is what's called an engineering based study. That's where every uh, every main uh, construction uh, element is uh, an engineering based. We have a uh, a, a plumbing engineer look at every study. We have a an HVAC engineer, an electrical engineer, because only they know behind the drywall what's really there in terms of the value of the wiring, how much gauge is in that wire, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So the IRS says you should do an engineering-based study because it's the most accurate. And that's why 
quite frankly, an engineering based study gives you the most write offs too, because we're going to go right down to the penny of exactly what the value of what's in your property. Um, some other rule of thumb methods, uh, because they're rule of thumb and they're not as exact, the people that provide those kind of studies will not give you as much tax benefit as an engineering based study because we know exactly what the number is. And some of them have to use a rule of thumb guess. And to be safe on their guess, they're going to guess on a conservative basis, if that makes sense. So having an engineering based study, mm -hmm. I think, is uh, pretty important. So and that's exactly what we do. Um, yeah, here's all the different. Um, I mean, if you're building a building from scratch, the actual uh, cost records, that's that's the perfect study, actually. But we do a lot of detailed engineering, reversing the construction backwards. And again, these are the two methods that we provide. And the IRS actually says that there are some some problematic uh, elements to the others. And you can read about it. I, I can always email out this exact part of the IRS guideline. Uh, and the IRS just hired like 900,000 people. I don't know, whatever it was. It was all over the news. So, um, you know, um, if this is a big deduction, and it is, I mean, I've, I've, it's, it's not uncommon to have over two hundred fifty thousand dollars of accelerated depreciation, and for somebody to, to, to defer or to save a hundred thousand dollars in taxes this year, um, I would just encourage someone to think through. I once, I had a, a diesel Mercedes that burned oil. It didn't really change oil. I just burned oil. And I once got audited for all the crazy miles on the road that I did. And I had no way to back it up and I had to settle, you know, but I, I went through such stress over that. I just know that if you're thinking about doing cost segregation, you don't have to worry about any stress. Our company has successfully hand, handled the 15 audits that we had to defend. The IRS reaffirmed our methodology and every calculation remained to the penny. Um, so just, I think, you know, it, how was it said, you know, did you save a lot of money getting that cheap attorney? Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 might, that might be the best analogy, but I, I thank you, Nika. And I thank you, Peggy, for the opportunity, but happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Do you, do people get sued over the cost segregation or audited by the IRS? We don't see it. I mean, out of 40,000 studies in the last 21 years, we've only had to defend 15 studies. So I think if you have a good reputation, um, you don't have a problem. But um, I, I will tell you, there's a there's another prominent company out there that does a lot of these um, and their pricing is similar to ours. Um, and they're supposedly an engineering based, but at the national meeting, they said, no, they're not an engineering based, but anyhow, here's what they're doing. They're suggesting to save money that the client take the pictures of the building and send it to them to do the analysis. And our, our CEO was laughing. He's like, how do you know it's not a motel six that went and took pictures at a four seasons? I mean, <laughs> it's like, you know, and, and here's here's what was most interesting. He said in all the audits, because he's the CEO, he's involved with every single one of those 15 audits because it potentially could impact our business in a big way. Right. So he said every single time they asked who took the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Just be aware, just be aware who took the pictures was the first question out of uh, the auditor's mouth. So mm -hmm. you know, again, with us, you don't have to worry about any of this. We, this is all we do. Uh, we will successfully defend it. Um, and we're very economical for what we do actually for the price as well. Uh, if you do shop prices, you'll find our pricing is very good, but the extras you get dealing with CSSI are, are, um, uh, definitely worth considering us <laughs> so. okay great yeah. so could you stop sharing the screens and we can oh sure it? sorry i didn't know i had to do that sorry there we go well we can't see everybody in the eye if we can't and look at there's a hand up already clip oh. <laughs> all right because i my bets kurt might have a question also sometime along here go ahead david, clip. david thank you for the presentation um i do have a few questions Sure. Um, and, and I'm going to kind of uh, start with the last one, the last statement you left off with. So how do you actually um, come up with the, the amount that is charged for cost segregation? Is it price-based uh, or is it percentage-based? For, for us, for us mm -hmm. it's, 
Can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. Did I? Yes. yes. Okay. For us, it's just the amount of time it takes our engineers to actually do the study. Um, okay. As you can imagine, a single family home, one story is faster than a two story versus a four story office building. And the people that actually do the studies, I when I provide an estimate to a client, I type up a page that has the square footage of the property, of the building itself, of the basis and all that information. And then the actual people that do the study, uh, I send Google Maps links to the photos of the property. They can see all around it. And also, usually there's a, a you know, a Zillow or a, a rental.com where they can see the interior too. So they can get an idea for what kind of flooring. The flooring is what throws off the estimates. Um, we we take the conservative approach that tile is a 39-year or a 27-year property um, because it's grouted and it, it, it's affixed to the property. And if you can imagine not being able to accelerate that, but if it was carpet versus hardwood planking, that's that's where I really try to press for an appraisal or interior pictures so I know the estimate's accurate because I've seen it come back different when there's tile flooring. I'm sorry, I'm just... Uh, uh, and yeah, it's it's how long it takes is how they base the pricing, I'm told. Yeah. OK. Um, and then what price point for a property would you suggest uh, a property be valued at before cost seg is performed? Um, well, again, I would always run the estimate before suggesting anybody do anything because the estimates are very accurate. Over 100 studies I've done with this company and well over 95 percent of the time we do better than our estimate. It's not by accident. We want to surprise to the upside. So uh, our estimates are accurate. Um, and um, I'm sorry, I was up really late last night. What was your question? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's all right. Um, so I was asking at what price point would you suggest? Oh, thank you. Before? Yeah. Yep. You know, they tell us to run estimates to, you know, a two on a $200,000 basis. So that's kind of the point where we, uh, we look for it. Um, um, but yeah, I, uh, they've told me that 150 has panned out before because of the type of property. But again, I it, you know, if you can pull forward 20% of that 150,000, that's a $30,000 accelerated depreciation. Maybe that $10,000 of tax savings was was worth spending a couple grand. I don't know. You know, it all depends on the property. So, yeah. Okay. Um, if a short-term rental was purchased in 2022, but a cost seg has not been performed yet, and they take the full 100 percent or is it 80 percent now and would there be a loss in benefit due to waiting a year um several parts to that question um you're a tax professional i think no i am not oh, okay um i thought there was one on the call uh, there's something uh, there's something known as a 3115 uh it's a, it's called a change of accounting form a 3115 is a it's like a 20 some page document. And most CPAs, most EAs tell me they've never filled one out and they don't want to fill one out. And they're happy if we handle it. So basically, if you buy a property and you put it in service with rental income, if you put it in service in a calendar year, in a tax year, you do you apply the study that same tax year when it first goes on the depreciation schedule, then you don't need the 3115. That's the, the least expensive time to do a study is in the first year that you buy it and apply those uh, benefits right to it. Um, if you so if, if waiting till 2023, if purchased in 2022, now 3115 has to be performed. Yeah, you'll you'll need a 3115 if it if it's ever on the depreciation schedule initially as straight line method of depreciation, you have to reverse that out, ma that math out, and then apply the uh, the cost segregation accelerated benefits. Um, yeah. So now we we're ha we charge seven fifty. It's a flat rate to do the thirty one fifteen. That's that's the difference in doing it the first year versus a, a subsequent year. I've been told by many tax professionals that is well worth the price because they hate doing it. <laughs> but uh, but if you could if you could save literally seven hundred fifty dollars by applying a study um, the first year that it goes on the depreciation schedule when it's in service that tax year that saves money. I always encourage people to try to do that. Yeah. Okay, and then um, would that be at the eighty percent or one hundred percent? Um, well, that's a separate question. Uh, the 750 cost for the 3115, 
that's the way it's been for 20 years of our company. If we do the 3115, here's our fee. Um, when you're talking about bonus depreciation, that's the government tax law. And for the government tax law, um, any any properties put into service in 22 or prior get 100% bonus. Anything okay. put into service this year, 2023, get 80%. But there's something called double declining balance where... <laughs> I'm going to get into the weeds a little bit, but it's actually almost like 90%. It's still great to do it in 2023 because there's something called de double declining balances where you take that one fifth, one fifth of the five-year property and you can take two fifths of the first year. And most of the benefit is in the five-year property more so than the 15 year. You know, some, some single family homes, rentals just don't have a big driveway, you know, but they have a lot of molding and fireplace and all that stuff. So but yeah, it's still a great benefit for 2023. It's 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 almost like 90%, even though it's 80% technically. But then it will drop to 60, 40, and 20. But they're discussing it again in the houses of legislation. So we'll see. So, so if nothing changes, will that cost seg eventually go away after it drops to 20? That yeah, it's it's supposed to be phased out in five years. But it's still a benefit if you can imagine getting 20% of your building depreciated in five mostly five years or 15 years it's still a benefit but the bonus just makes makes this kind of a no-brainer in, in my opinion okay um if there's not enough income to offset the cost seg benefit can that deduction be applied across multiple years it i understand it applies against multiple properties in the same year um okay. again I'm not, I'm not a tax professional ask your tax professional but if you've got five properties bringing in a certain amount of income and you can accelerate depreciation in one, it will create a deduction against all the income stream of that passive income. Um, and then, um, and it rolls forward. So if you can't use it all this year, you don't lose it. If, if you, if the income was 50 grand in the property and the write-offs a hundred grand or whatever, you can offset it half this year and half next year. And, it does roll forward often. It's a big, it's a big deduction. Yeah. Okay. Um, last question. How far back can someone go after a property is put into service and have a cost segregation done? Uh, great question. Um, it, uh, it depends on how much they paid for the property and whether it was a 27 or a 39 year depreciation. Let me give you an example. <laughs> if it's a $5 million property, commercial property, 39 years, you, in uh, in 10 years, you've only taken 25% of the 39 years. So I would say up to 10 years, you could get an estimate on a commercial property that you paid over four or 5 million for. Why not see what it looks like? Um, if it's a residential property though, you know, you're depreciating it over 27 years. So in 10 years, you've taken more than a third of it. So usually with, you know, apartments, uh, apartments, uh, multifamily, single family rentals, you probably could go back, I think seven years maybe, and just see what it looks like. But you might be only paying, you know, a couple grand to save three. So it might, you know, it, there's a point where it just doesn't make sense. We'll run estimates on anything. And, and uh, we always encourage, I always encourage that you make sure you run the numbers by your tax professional, make sure they confirm the basis is correct. Because if the basis is wrong, then all the all the other numbers are wrong. You have to have an agreement to what the land value was that needs to be pulled out of a property bought last year or this year. Um, but if it's been on a previous tax return, we just need a picture of the depreci depreciation schedule to know how much uh, the depreciable basis is uh, to, to know that the estimate's accurate. So, right. Perfect. Thank you, David. Thank you, Cleo. Nika? Oh. It moved whenever he did that I, for my mute button. Um, yeah, so my question is, is because uh, what states do you do this in? What are the ones that you don't? And since you were saying that, do you have to go to the property? And I guess you have to at least take pictures yourself. Yeah. <laughs> do you have to fly there? And is that additional charge for well, that? Thank you. Those are great questions. And I should have mentioned that earlier. The company that wants people to take the pictures because they're a smaller company, they don't have people all over the country like we do. So we can literally do any income property anywhere in the country. And it's our people that will come by. And it is, by the way, it is an IRS requirement 
that the third party company do the site visit. So they're <laughs> for them to ask people to take the pictures, our CEO is beside himself. He's like, he can't believe what the competition is willing to do. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we can study any property anywhere in the country. And we've even done because people pay their US income taxes on Mexico, you know, Baja, California, Puerto Rico properties, we can do those as well. So Puerto Rico, yeah. And do you does the person fight to go to Hawaii? No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we already have people there. We already have people there. Yeah. I'm all excited that I get to uh, yeah, I'm crazy. I get to go to Orange County with my wife. Yahoo, you know. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> we're beach. We get to study a property on the beach. Yay. You know. But yeah. it, it 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 is kind of fun getting to drive around. I mean, I, I'm usually sitting at my desk making phone calls all day, but I look I, I got to go to a nice winery in Ojai the other day. That was crazy because that property had like 35% could be accelerated. He had like a short-term rental on the property. He had a swimming pool with the main house. Crazy how much he was able to accelerate on that property. What's the name of that winery? I'd like to go visit. Uh, it, well, <laughs> I don't, it's just his personal family winery. I guess he's going to put his name on it. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was like you could stay in a short-term rental. I mean, oh, I mean, right, right, right. No, no it's going to be on Airbnb. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking that it, if it was an Airbnb, he obviously maybe does a wine tasting and you can swim in the pool. There you go. He's got I want to go. There's a nice meditation in Ojai too. It's really cool. If you've ever oh. been up there, that there's a mountain thing where you go to the meditation. Ojai is beautiful. It is hot in the summer though. Yeah. That it is. And it's, it's, it's nice. basic farming area. Yeah. yeah. Very hot. Yeah. It was warm that day actually. Yeah. It's always warm enough. <laughs> it feels like it's know. like, yeah. I mean, it's it's a good. It's it's a lot warmer than, yeah. It's shocking when you come from LA. I mean, it's sometimes a fifteen degree difference same day. And it's elevated. That's yeah. what's really weird. It's elevated. Yeah. yeah. But they they grow great great oranges there. Yeah. Okay, so does anybody else have any questions? I thought Kurt would be interested to ask a question. Uh, so if you, uh, when you get your K-1, that just shows under the depreciation number? Because it's just one number, right? Because well, all that stuff's done by the accountant, and then when they create the K-1s, they just fill out that depreciation section with one number. Yep, we supply the numbers to whoever puts together the K-1. And after that, I'm out of the picture. <laughs> okay. So if I were to have not done a cost seg and I had to, and I decide like five years later, but I fix the property up, is there something special I need to do? How am I going to remember what I threw away? Well, you can't. That's why you have to take the pad in the same year that you throw stuff away. So oh, okay. it is, it's kind of, I want to share this idea with people because I know it would help them as they look at properties they're going to buy that they need to fix up. But it's kind of a negative thing to bring up because so many people missed this in the past. And I'm sorry for that. Yeah. Okay. So I buy something this year. It needs to be fixed up. I really want to make it more for you know, the young people that are coming in today. So I put them in. Now I wait till next year. I need to fix those units up, but I've got people in them. What do you have a suggestion you make? Well, if we if we run the estimate, we will let you know the value of waiting so you can decide whether you want to not get that deduction or wait till they're out to do the repairs and renovation. Yeah, but they might not ever move out. Well, then that's the decision, I guess. Yeah. Well, and then the other is what you you tell them they have to leave, and then you do the fix up, but you just lost a good tenant. It just it's just a strange. Yeah, it's it just really support the business of. It's the government believes that if you buy a property and you immediately throw stuff away that there's no value to it. And I think that makes sense. That's why they want you to have, they want to see that somebody's willing to stay there and pay for it before it allows you to throw some stuff away and claim those deductions. I think that's where they're coming from. 
So I, I need to Airbnb the place till the end of the year. Now I could go fix it up. Then I could put people in. So we'll do a figure it out thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have invited. It doesn't, cost, it doesn't cost anything to get estimates from us. You know, what's good is if you have a rough budget of what you're planning on doing to the place, send that information along because whatever you're spending is actually going to be the cost basis for what you're going to accelerate in that renovation. So when you say in service, does it have, is there a minimum in service? Like, could it be a month? No, you know, talk to your tax professional. Supposedly you have to just prove that you're advertising it for a customer. That's the tax law. You don't even have to get rent is my understanding, but every tax no. professional is different. They don't want to get audited over it. So talk to your own tax professional, but yeah, I mean, it's in service if someone's paying you rent. So yeah, uh, if you're advertising so, it because it's- Have rent. some friends come and visit for two weeks and give you some money. There you go. There you go. <laughs> give you know, them blow up beds. I, that, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I think that's safer if it's audited than, hey, I yeah. had it advertised. I had it advertised. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, you could advertise it too. Okay, well, we'll have to think about that how to do that. We can come up with a lot of fun ideas, <laughs> especially if there's a construction going on, you can always have, instead of them going to Motel 6, they could rent out the apartment while they're doing that. And you sure don't want to fix it up when you got construction people coming in every night. <laughs> For sure. Yep. Yeah. Fred, do you have any questions? No, no, this oh. was all pretty straightforward okay yeah well you're the numbers guy karen <laughs> as a visitor have you come in for the first time do you have any questions this was informative and now my brain is going but i don't have any immediate questions okay great what's your background my background i'm uh -huh. a i'm a i'm a landlord and i've recently started investing in um opportunity zone properties okay well you might want to know this guy. <laughs> yeah, yes. Marcy, you usually have a question. You're muted. No, I just wanted to understand the concept. And I, th I think he's given us enough examples. Um, and if we need to get any more of the de uh, details of a specific um piece of property we can call him or or contact him if he gives us his contact information yep well we have his contact information okay so you can always come to us and then we'll set up or uh whatever you need so like that joe you're here for the first time i'm sorry it's not joe johnny you're here for the first time do you have any questions uh no i uh, just thank you david for your presentations. I've um, been into a few multifamily Zoom meetings and I uh, know your partner, uh, Mark Gross from the Chicago area and he's from CSSI and, and I see him regularly uh, uh, once a week attending oh, okay. to, to some Zoom event. Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I think Ted had a question though. Ted. This is mostly reinforcement for what Dave said. The better records you keep, the the better results you're going to get from a study like this. And the uh, and the other is to talk to your, let's say your tax preparers. Uh, a kind of a rhetorical question you can ask them is, what do they think about uh, about cost seg? The, the answer you do not want to hear is, what is it? Yeah, I was going to say, what is that? <laughs> well, if you do, it's time to find a new CPA, truly. So I don't know if, e I mean, Ethan's usually on the phone and working, and uh, but he is a key person, and I don't know if there's anything. Ethan, are you available at all? I just wanted to ask, as a key person, does cost segregation interest you in any way? And... He's not here to answer. So that takes care of that. 
Anybody else have a question or a comment? Because we are at the top of the hour. Well, David, thank you so very, very much for coming. We really appreciate it. And if we ask you back, would you be interested in coming? Sure. Okay, good. That That's tech good. stuff is so exciting. I'm sure we'll get hundreds of people. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Peggy and Nika, for the invite. I will sign off, I guess, right? You have another.